Where you live definitely dictates whether or not you can quickly and easily charge your EV at a competitive price. Are you suffering in your postcode? Are you locked out in the postcode lottery? In some parts of the country, the price for Type 2 AC charging is a brutally criminal £4 per kilowatt hour. And yet, they get more government grants to install more chargers. In others, there are many totally free chargers. Well, Dave takes it on, looks at the regions and discovers where is best for easy and cheap charging, north, southeast. And along the way, I uncovered some really dodgy practices. Stand by, pull no punches, but I also reveal at the end where you can charge your EV today, 9th of September, totally free of charge on both private and council-run public chargers. There's no free petrol stations I could find to do a comparison video. Also, I include the actual Department for Transport cost per mile figures of an EV against an ICE car, and that is exceedingly interesting. Don't miss that later, but first, the bad news and scandal that is affecting the EV charging scene. Now, I thought Electric Highway had faded away when they merged with GridServe in 2021. GridServe has gone on to become a really great EV charging network, installing multiple ultra-rapid chargers at all popular locations and charging sensible prices. It surprised me to find that Electric Highway is still around and seemingly, in my opinion, trying to destroy the cheap and available charging structure in the UK. It is also under investigation by the Competition and Markets Association, CMA, for their practices. That's not good, but it shows it's not just me. As I've said many times, in the early days, maybe 10, 12, 13 years ago, Electric Highway went round the country and signed up almost all motorway services to exclusive contracts, giving them a total monopoly. Now, the motorway services at the time saw this as nothing as important because at that time, EVs consisted of a few Nissan Leaf, a few Renault Zoes, BMW i3, VW e Golf and e-up. Well, none of these were really road trip capable and none would undertake a long journey that involved multiple charging stops every 100 miles, taking an hour or more at each. Electric Highway, despite their merger, still holds those exclusive monopoly contracts and, from what I've discovered, they seem to be increasingly actively enforcing them to the total detriment of EV drivers. This has now become the subject of a separate video I'll be releasing shortly. Please subscribe so you don't, don't miss that one. Well, my first visit was to the Department for Transport and my first surprise. They don't bother collecting their own data, they just use ZapMap. No, I'm not joking. Now, this is in no way to belittle ZapMap. They do a great job. They offer effective data and try to keep up to date. Any previous criticism of mine was about them not being totally up to date. We can't rely on it. Uh, on data like availability and prices. And the website and app were being quite dated and slow. But learn for that, I use them a lot myself for research. Well, their website is actually a tre treasure trove of information. And I would encourage anyone interested to download their handy PDF guides. Although steer clear of their detailed guides, these cost £3,000 and are now for commercial use. Let's have a quick overview of the situation. Just 21 major councils offer free EV charging out of a total of 317 major councils and over 12,000 local and town councils. Private, totally free public charges are still to be found in plenty, and there's details of these later. And there's also an increasing number of workplace charges that are being installed, with many of these totally free to use. Just a point, if your workplace allows you to park your car in their car park each day, ask them to install fast 7 kilowatt chargers. There are huge grants available to them, and it counts towards their green credentials. They love it. This map shows the overall distribution of EV chargers. Now, as an end overview, it can actually be a bit misleading if, for example, a small Scottish island with just a few hundred occupants installs a couple of chargers. But overall, it looks pretty bad for me up in the northwest. We have half the number of chargers per 100,000 population that they have in Scotland. On my own travels confirm this. Manchester and Liverpool, two major cities, are particularly poorly served. Yet Cornwall is steaming ahead with 50% more chargers and accelerating as more networks target the lucrative tourist trade. 
Cornwall's population is only around half a million, but that doubles, triples or even quadruples in the holiday season. The speed of charges is also changing, especially recently with GridServe getting half a billion pound funding to install ultra-rapid chargers, and with Tesla scaling up their installations and opening up their powerful ultra-rapid chargers to non-Tesla drivers. Here the trend is obvious, all types and speeds of chargers are seeing huge growth, but fast charger growth is still outpacing rapid and ultra-rapid. Oh, this is quite logical, they're cheaper to buy and it's easy and quicker to find sites and power supplies for one or two low, relatively power, 50 kilowatt units. Prices next, with the average overall UK average price now 51 pence for slow or fast and 76 pence, rapid or ultra rapid? 76? I don't actually know anyone charging that. That can't be an average. Anyway, ZapMap help, helpfully converts this to show that an EV driver using slow or fast chargers at these rates pays 14 pence a mile and using rapid or ultra rapids pays 21 pence a mile. So with petrol today at £1.53 and diesel at £1.56 a litre or around £7 a gallon, an ICE car doing 30 miles per gallon pays 24p, 40 miles per gallon pays 18p, and a 50 mile per gallon pays 14p just in fuel. Now ZapMap do offer three families with EVs in three scenarios, 80% home charging, 50% home and 20% home versus ICE. And none of the EVs cost more than their ICE equivalent. There's more on this later. Prices also have risen overall by around 46% between July last year and July this year. OK, it's a constantly changing situation, but where is it free? Well, everywhere. Some councils are promoting free EV charging, like Leeds up in Yorkshire and Bridgend and Woking, and a lot in Scotland, while free private Type 2 chargers are literally everywhere. It is generally cheaper than average up north, despite not having as many chargers, the northwest, northeast, Wales, and even the Midlands. is much dearer in the south, typically 25% dearer. And Cornwall tops the league, along with London, for the highest prices, about 100% dearer than the average, while Scotland leads the way for maximum free and cheap charges. Now, an important note here, neither ZapMap nor the government seem to seriously take Tesla into account, and that really affects these findings. The list of prices from which they work out the average includes BP Pulse, Genie Point, uh, MFG, Osprey, Instavolt, all at 79p, and Tesla at 60p. As a Tesla driver, I've not been able to find a single supercharger that charges 60p. The average is around 40p off-peak and 55p peak. And then I read the small print. 60p is for non-Tesla owners using Tesla superchargers. And of course, non-Tesla owners are charged a premium. One must now doubt all their figures. Uh, not because I'm a Tesla fanboy, and I'll say anything to support them, but the simple fact is around 70% of all the EVs on the UK roads today are Teslas, and they happily use cheap superchargers off-peak, down about 40p, almost exclusively for the longer journeys, and according to that map, in even smaller print, and most do regularly charge at home, far cheaper for most of the time. Ha! Huh, that's really small print. Anyway, this results in a totally confusing situation, and the subject itself is already absolutely huge and changing almost daily. So I have a problem. Do I focus on fast 7 kilowatt public charges for people who cannot charge at home? or 350 kilowatt ultra rapid chargers for those with fast charging cars who do regular road trips. What happens if one region has loads of one type of charger and very few of the other? And how do you compare really cheap ultra rapid chargers, which are actually cheaper than some extortionate fast chargers? Well, I'm going to end this video now with, as promised, a montage of free chargers available today, 9th of September 2023, throughout the UK and an announcement that this video is just the beginning. It is a brief introduction to a series of videos which will cover the whole of the UK, region by region, pitting one against the other, with a deep, detailed dive into where, how many, how powerful, how reliable, how expensive, how available chargers are around the country, who runs them, 
and what plans have I uncovered about their future changes? I hope you'll stick around for these videos. Thanks for watching to the end. I'm Dave.